Hey everybody, welcome to episode three of the PD Preps podcast. My name is Keenan Odori. I'm here with my colleague and co-host Gus Morris. We are about to talk, chat through all things week two here and a wild, wild week two in, in high school football across the board. Some some big names fell. Uh, there were some upsets. There were a lot closer games than, than, than we thought. Um, but I mean, Gus, just, just a I mean, it's only week two. It it was only week two, and it, and it, and we've already had some 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 great crazy games. So so just kind of your t- key takeaways from uh, week two there. Uh yeah, it was um definitely an interesting week two. Uh, like you said, we had some upsets or some big teams went down. We had Carmel Newman losing to Vacaville. We had Windsor losing to Escalon. Uh, Annalee gave San Marin a really tight battle in a game that I covered last week. Uh, really impressed with uh, the Annalee team this year. You know, Ranch Katati obviously won big. Montgomery won big. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, I, I I I touched on this in my analysis piece last, uh, or I guess over the weekend. But yeah, kind of an interesting um, an interesting second week for some of these big teams in the Oak. Uh, yeah, it was really kind of. It, it, it was good to, I guess, kind of see some of these teams get get tested kind of this early in the season, and 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 you know we had, we, we we definitely had some questions about kind of you know what Cardinal Newman would look like, you know, kind of with the new quarterback and kind of in the second year of head coach Richard Sanchez, and then Windsor, kind of what they would look like, and you know, obviously both both those teams were really impressive in week one, but um, yeah, kind of uh, kind of coming back down to earth, I guess, this week for those two, and um, I'd say out of all the results that we had, those those two were kind of the most interesting. Um, you know, Newman obviously uh, lost their their star running back linebacker, Santino Acevedo, uh, I guess, early in the game against Vacaville. And then they struggled a lot on defense. And I guess they had the ball uh, late with a chance to tie it, but just couldn't do it. And yeah, I mean, without, you know, Santino, I, I, I guess he's questionable for this week's game against Vintage. But if he doesn't play, that's a huge, huge loss for them. And um, uh, yeah, they're a much different team when he doesn't play. So yeah, Newman kind of, kind of facing some adversity, I guess, early here in the season. And then, um, Windsor falling 49, 35 at, at Escalon, which is a really, really talented team. And, um, both of us had taken Windsor and, um, upon doing some other research, you know, I was looking at, at, at Escalon and they had almost beaten the team in Buchanan the week before that was like a top 30 team in the state or is a top 30 team in the state. So, um, yeah, I mean a two-score loss there. Honestly, I think it shows that you know while it's obviously you know a, 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 you know putting up allowing forty-nine points on on defense is never good for for a team. But Escalon kind of like the the chatter I've seen about them is like they're they're probably poised for a really deep run, or and they're probably the favorite in Division Five in the Sac Joaquin section. So um, yeah, I mean Windsor just ran into a really 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 good team, and um, you know I think they showed some fight. So. Um, and again, I think uh, kind of a teaser for other stuff that we have coming up, but I think that's going to reflect in our rankings this week. So, um, yeah. So other than that, I mean, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was interesting to kind of see some of these top teams in the OP tested. And then, um, yeah, the Redwood once again, kind of didn't fare super well, but kind of is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously you did see, you did see some teams take care of business. Obviously Rancho Katati did, did, did what they do against Redwood. Uh, Monty ended up winning St. Vincent. Ended up going to Nevada, which was kind of a weirdly scheduled game, but the, they ended up walking out with a with a shutout win there. Um, like you said, the Redwood was, it, I mean, the Redwood is still struggling. Although there was one game that that we were uh, not not surprised about per se, but uh, because we knew how improved Maria Carrillo was, but we just didn't know how improved they were, and they almost uh, took it to Casa Grande, who are the uh, defending uh, VVAL champs. So, um, so certainly that certainly bodes well for, for Carrillo and I guess the rest of the rest of the Redwood that they may have, um, an, a, another, another team up there competing, competing for the title. I know, I know they took a back seat last year, especially in the Oak, but, uh, Carrillo going that close against Casa Gus is, uh, it's pretty spectacular. Yeah. And they, I mean, they were actually like, like you know, one miracle play from Casa away from winning that game. I mean, I think it was Casa Grande quarterback, Wyatt Abramson had some scramble, you know, 80, some like 80 yard touchdown pass with like a minute left on fourth down that like clinched them that game. So it was, um, yeah, I mean, Korea was like, was seconds away there from, from kind of stealing a huge, huge season opener. And yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, that was a team that, you know, you had previewed kind of early in the, um, you know, doing you know, all of our season preview work and, you know, obviously all these teams are very high on high on themselves kind of when they, you know, when they open the season, but you know, they, they had a tough year last year in the Oak and they took their lumps and, it was kind of ugly at, at some points, but to open a season like this with almost beating Casa, I mean, 
again, it's it's it, it's only the first game of the season. I know Casa has has a ton of new pieces too, but they were they're kind of figured to be a team that's that, that's going to compete for for a, for a Vival title again this season. And yeah, yeah. Carrillo, Carrillo kind of really tested them early. So, um, uh, I yeah, I mean, like you said, I I I think that you know this year, I mean, I think Saint Vincent, you know, is kind of the clear front runner already in the uh, in the Redwood. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, Carrillo kind of looks like they might be in that mix as well. Um, and then same thing with Ukiah. I know that they're zero and two, but they 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 played two pretty tough teams to start. Absolutely, uh, Montgomery and Northgate. They lost twenty eight to six this week, but. Um, yeah, I think that those three teams, I mean, again, it's just, you know, two, two weeks into the season. I think that those, those three teams could be kind of all up there in the mix. So yeah, definitely a strong week for Carrillo. And then same thing for Annaly too. Um, you know, I was, I was at that game, the Annaly San Marin game and while they lost, uh, it, you know, it, it really showed that Annaly is probably kind of on an upswing this year. They have tons of weapons on the outside. I was really impressed with how their line was able to handle San Marin's bigger line, more experienced line. Um, I think in the first half, their uh, first half it was seven seven, and then you know the floodgates open, and I think um, <clears throat> Sam Marin actually had kind of pulled away late, and then Anley got a couple late touchdowns, and yeah, really kind of made it a made it a close competitive game there. But you know, Anley had a couple guys go down on defense, uh, you know, I guess late there in the first half, and then that kind of that kind of led to some of the defensive um, defensive you know letdowns and big plays in the second half. But yeah, I mean, Anley, it's 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 crazy. I mean, like they <laughs> like. I, if they were in the Redwood, I think that they would run away with that league easily. But because they're in the Oak, they literally might have three or maybe four losses um, yeah. this year. So it's like they're they're really going to be tested come come playoffs. But I like the fact that they rose to a challenge and almost beat a defending state champion, San Marin. Um, again, like quality losses are definitely a thing. And I think that was a quality loss for them. Same thing with Maria Carrillo. Sure. Sure. Yeah, but uh, I think the uh, one key takeaway here, and obviously uh, if you were following Gus, you would know how much of a back-and-forth game it really was, but I think this kind of cements, uh, I mean, uh, we knew everybody was high on the kid, but I think this kind of cements Sammy Long as, as the real deal at quarterback for, for Annaly. I mean, he just had a monster game last week, didn't he? Yeah, 402, four touchdowns. I think he was like 24 for 39 passing or something. He had a couple uh, interceptions in the second half that were like ill-timed. One of them he got, he got picked off in the end zone that, you know, probably was going to end in a scoring drive. And then another one, he, he kind of scrambled and, and and threw up a bad bad jump ball. And then he also had a couple of throws in the first half, too, that were so overthrown receivers. But, no, I mean, again, you and I both saw him during seven-on-seven seven stuff during, you know, during the offseason. And, yeah, I mean, again, he is – poised he can scramble now he has a, a awesome arm i mean i was talking to uh, jared brown is their um, defensive coordinator and also uh the former annaly coach who's now an assistant coach over at or al molino coach is now over annaly um but yeah he's crazy. I, I mean again this this staff is like as, as as high on this group as they have been in 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 any in a in, in quite a while and, and and again he has some awesome weapons too like logan mitchell who, you know who had almost 200 yards receiving um they have guys like uh, Solomon Hall, who also had a great game. Uh, Jaden Brady who was awesome at at at, at running back. He had like almost on, I think around like a hundred all-purpose yards. Um, so again, I mean, this is a team that I offensively, I think that the, that they can keep up with anybody here, like in this area. It's just going to be question marks on defense. And I I thought last week against San Marin, they showed that they have the those defensive chops. Um, but then then they lost a couple guys, and then depth depth kind of became a problem. So. Um, that'll be kind of, kind of the big, the big key for them going forward is, is, you know, if they can stop teams and if they can, you know, keep teams from, from getting into shootouts. Cause they did for, for one half against San Marin and then, um, you know, the wheels kind of fell off. But other than that, I was very, very impressed by what I saw from Manly last week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, some, some other, some other solid wins, Petaluma routing Santa Rosa. We, we kind of knew Santa Rosa was going to have a tough time in the, in the Oak this, this season, but for, uh, Petal, much improved Petaluma squad. Um, they do have uh, some big news coming out of their camp for this week's game against Annaly that we will get to when we do our uh, game game predictions there. But before we get to the rankings here, um, seems like the wheels fell off a of Piner a little bit these last couple weeks, losing to uh, a, a, a sort of like an in, in county game there against uh, Cloverdale. But is it is it that Piner kind of lost it, or is Cloverdale a lot better than we thought, Gus? Well, it was great actually because I got uh, with, uh, uh, Cloverdale head coach Taylor Galloway was texting me actually yesterday about um, about how uh, uh, I guess kind of how the game broke down and um, 
Yeah, Cloverdale has a, has a freshman to watch this year. Uh, a, a guy that was I don't I don't think that we had touched on in our previews, but I don't think that Cloverdale even knew about him at that point. But um, he's, let me let me try to get his name right here. I think it was uh, he's a freshman freshman quarterback. He came in for the second half. Uh, his name is Mason Cavarelli. Uh, freshman. He had four touchdowns uh, in the second half. I believe it was four touchdowns in the second half. Um, but yeah, his yeah scored four touchdowns. Uh, his very first play was a 34 yard rushing touchdown. Um, first play ever on varsity as a freshman as a quarterback. So um, yeah, a uh, big bodied kid. I didn't see him throw the ball at all in the highlights that he sent me, but um, kind of a kind of a big kid who can run the ball. Uh, yeah, so Cloverdale, I guess, just you know put this guy back in, you know, uh, in a quarterback and 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 just kind of just yeah just. Just rode, him to the, just rode him to the victory, I guess. So he, uh, yeah. So um, I don't know. I mean, like, again, I'm, I, I was pretty high on Cloverdale this year. I know that again, you know, you had covered Piner, you know, doing some preview stuff and you know, obviously, you know, they have some weapons too, but I, th- I think they were up 21, seven and a half. And then um, again, kind of same thing as the end of the game, it kind of became a shootout, but it sounds like that this, you know, Catarelli kid just really took over the game in the second half. So, um, it might have been just more like Cloverdale found a spark and then just, you know, rallied to a win like that. Um, and then it sounded like Piner had a couple a couple of bad turnovers, too. So, um, again, I, I don't think it's, you know, it's it's not all doom and gloom for Piner this year. I don't think, you know, I think that there are some winnable games later in the season. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that they just ran into a ran into a Cloverdale team that just got hot at the right time at the, you know, on the right night. So, yeah. No, no, absolutely. And, and it's good that you point that out because, I mean, that one spark can take a team so far and you never know that. I mean, heck, not looking forward by like too forward by any means, but, you know, that spark could end up being like a playoff runner. You, you never really know. But um, now, Gus, this is where this is where things get interesting. Uh, these these top five rankings this week, obviously, we had uh, we do have some movement. Um Number one, we got Rancho. They keep their spot after after a dominant win over Redwood and, and breakout performances from Liam Keeney and, and, and Cy Vajwale. Uh, but number two, we moved Windsor up to number two. Cardinal Newman dropped down to number three. Uh, Montgomery's number four, and St. Vincent is number five. On the bubble, we have uh, Casa, Anneli, and Petaluma, who all made... Uh, Great cases to to be in the top five, but obviously uh, Montgomery and St. Vincent sort of uh, sort of held firm and uh, on their wins and, and and took those four and five spots. But Gus three week two and or Gus week two and uh, the top three already shaken up a little bit. Yep. Um, yeah. So uh, I I don't know when we plan to release this podcast, but uh, currently it is uh, Tuesday. What's the date? September sixth. So I think th- th- these will be published by the time. This comes out, so this will kind of be a good uh, a good explainer for us to kind of um, talk about why we did that switch with with Windsor and Newman. So um, again, uh, preseason it it really did seem like it was going to be Rancho and Newman as kind of the top two. Windsor is kind of a, a mystery team. Where you know what are they going to do with a new coach with a lot of young pieces? Um, and that was kind of that was pretty solidified as the top three, I guess, in our eyes, and again in a lot of coaches' eyes as well. Um, for week two, so. With Newman, I think that if Newman has Santino Acevedo again, their star running back is just star linebacker. I, I don't know how many other teams can slow a guy like that down. I mean, he is a massive impact player. When he went out massive. in that g- massive, I mean, I mean, like, so I've seen, I saw, so last year uh, when Newman was playing against uh, Marin Catholic in the Division Four NCS title game, uh, Santino was hurt. He had a broken wrist, I believe, and he didn't play in Windsor and, and, and Newman got the doors absolutely blown off them. And I don't know how much, how much difference his presence would have made. I mean, again, Marin Catholic went on to win a state championship last year. So, um, I don't know if it would have been that much of a difference. Uh, but I do know that I, I believe it was a shutout or maybe they scored one touchdown, but I don't believe it would have been a five, you know, five, six touchdown game or whatever it was. So, all that being said, um, without him, I don't, you know, Newman takes a huge step back. And I think we saw that against Vacaville where, you know, they had some guys step up. I know Kaiser Steverson had had a long touchdown and he had an interception mm-hmm. that kind of helped them help keep them in the game late. But I mean, the fact that they couldn't put up, you know, more than one touchdown against a team like Vacaville, who don't get me wrong, good team, but by all accounts purposes, seems to be in a bit of a bit of a rebuilding, kind of a taking a trying to take a step forward, seeing what they have kind of year. Um, so I, you know, I mean, again, I think, I think if Newman has Santino, I think that they're probably a little more in line 
with the number two team in the area, but without him. And if he doesn't play this week against Vintage, I think that they're a clear number three. And and it might and again, people people might be asking too, why are you moving up Windsor when they lost by two touchdowns when you know Newman only lost by one? Valid yeah, yeah. V- v- valid question. It, valid it, question. It is a valid question. Valid yes. question. So so my answer to that is Windsor lost by two touchdowns to a team in Escalon that is probably the best Division Five team in the Sac Joaquin section. They almost beat uh, Buchanan the week before, which is a top thirty team in the state. Probably should have beat Buchanan. They're a top. So Buchanan is a top 35, 30 team in the state. Escalon, a way smaller school, almost almost beat them. Um, and I think the fact that again Windsor did not get routed by three, four, five touchdowns um, shows that they have the horses to compete with a team like that. And Again, two touchdowns. I know that they were down by, I think, three touchdowns that, you know, at a certain point, too, and they scored, I think, early in the fourth. I know Hayden Anderson had a, had a, had a huge game. I think he had four touchdowns again, too. But, um, yeah, I, like, also, again, allowing 49 points, too, is not ideal. But, again, I, I think Escalon, from, 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 from everything I've read and seen about Escalon, they're a team that's poised for a really, really deep run of the playoffs. Probably a section title is in their future, or maybe they're, you know, they're a favorite, at least. And they're probably a deep run in, this, in the state playoffs, too. So, for all those reasons, yeah. for all those reasons, and again, I on the flip side of this too, I don't think Vacaville is that same kind of caliber team. So with all of that said, that is kind of a rationale for moving Windsor up to two, is that yes, they lost by worse, but they lost by worse to a much better team than Newman did. And I think they put forth a better effort than Newman did as well. So I, I think that's, again, people will probably disagree. That's fine. These are our rankings. Like it or not, this is what we think. Um, so, yeah, and again, I think that this could also change, you know, I, I think we're, at, we're also at, at the part of the season now, too. I mean, again, we're, 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 heading, we're heading into week three, but we're at the part of the season now where these could switch any, any like, any particular week, too. Um, I mean, we're looking yeah. at this week, too, where Windsor is, is, is welcoming Camp Alinda, who's the defending NCS Division II champs. Um, and then Newman is going on the road to play, to play at Vintage, which is, you know, a, a, again, a powerhouse over in Napa. So, who the hell knows what's going to happen this week, but I imagine that I imagine that going forward, we're going to have probably some 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 movement, I guess, at a few of these spots in our top five rankings going forward, at least until league starts. Yeah, I mean, uh, if if week two is any indication, I mean, the, this season could be as unpredictable as any. I mean, the the mm-hmm. oak is so deep, you know, the Sac Joaquin section is obviously very deep, as 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 you just pointed out. Um, so who who the heck knows? But uh, let's let's get into these. Uh, predictions a little bit obviously our game of the week this week is going to be petaluma versus annally i will be at that one um but interesting and uh interesting tidbit here there is um again we're not we're not too sure when this podcast will come out but there are uh there are some waves in the in the petaluma camp that star quarterback henry ellis will uh not be suiting up um against annally which could uh <laughs> Which could uh, prove to be a, a huge loss, uh, especially against a team like Annaly, Gus. Yeah, I mean, again, having seen Annaly last week, uh, again, and being very impressed, we've already talked about them. Um, yeah, I mean, Petaluma has also r- had a pretty strong opening to the season. Um, I don't think their strength of schedule has been... I mean, to be fair, I think I think San Marino was the best team that Annaly's played so far, but I think it's also, out of the four games that Petaluma and Annaly have played, San Marino is by far the best team out of those two schedules. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, again, this is one that we had kind of had circled on our calendar, I guess, even before the season started as like kind of a really good local matchup between two kind of up and coming programs that could make some noise in their in their respective divisions. Um, yeah, Henry Ellis uh, returning first first team all leaguer as a junior last year, um, you, you know, kind of a dual threat guy, you know, really dangerous with his legs. I think he had three touchdowns um, rushing last week against Santa Rosa, but he hasn't really thrown the ball super well. Um, and I guess he might be dealing with some kind of, I don't know, he's, he's, he's kind of nicked up or something. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah. So he's, he, he's got something going on. So, um, uh, it, yeah, I mean, again, not sure if, uh, again, it is Tuesday. So, you know, maybe he, he, you know, he rallies and feels better by game time on, on Friday or something, but yeah, without him, um, I mean, again, I like it, it, it Petaluma it, is a very heavy run heavy heavy run team I, I mean i think they go three four deep at at running back and silas paula george is kind of kind of their star guy and you're, you're talking in the night for a 100 yard walk video series but he has something like 400 yards like five touchdowns on like 12 touches so far in the first two two games of the season right 
Now, again, that's against Tara Linda and Santa Rosa, who might not be the best defenses in the world. Um, and I think Emily will provide more of a challenge. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a team that you kind of know what they're going to do. And that was, you know, kind of talking to Emily coaches. It's like, yeah, we know what Pendleton's going to do. They're going to run the ball. They're, you know, that that's the book is kind of already out on them. So, but without Henry, Henry provides a huge, de- you know, the huge dimension in that, in that regard where, you know, yes, he can, you know, like, I think he, he hit three different guys for touchdowns, you know, last or uh, two guys, I, I think for touchdown passes last week. So he can throw the ball for sure. And I saw him last, last season when I watched him, he can absolutely throw the ball. Um, but yeah. he can, but what makes him so dangerous is he can't hurt you with his legs. And if he's not there, um, it's, you know, Anley is just, just going to be stacking the box the entire night. So, um, right. yeah, I mean, a tough challenge for Petaluma, you know, has definitely gotten tougher if, if Henry does not play next week or this week. Yeah, no, absolutely. I can't, I can't, I can't agree with you more. Um, but I mean, it still could be a great, it's, I mean, it still has all the makings to be a great game. So, so we'll see. Um, yep. last, last week, I mean, it's, it, it's kind of the tail of the tape so far, I guess, is you're kind of whooping my tail on these predictions, unfortunately, but again, you it's have early, been here, early in the season. You, you, you have been here longer too. So, so keep that in mind. Gus went nine and three last week. I went seven and five. Um, overall Gus is, Pretty solid 18 and seven. I am still in the winning percentage with 14 and 11. So I'll, I'll take my winning percentages when I can. Um, but let's get into these predictions here. Benicia at Maria Carrillo and Gus after, after what uh, Maria Carrillo did last, last week against Casa. I don't see why, I don't see why you don't pick them. Uh, don't pick them uh, at home here. Yeah. So both of us have Carrillo in this one. Uh, Benicia was a really good team last year. They made it to, I believe it was the semifinals or the finals of the NCS division three playoffs, but they lost. um, I think they had like some, something like two or three division one guys who are now graduated. They lost their quarterback. I'm pretty sure. Um, And yeah, I mean, again, I like, I I kind of feel like this could be a pick them, but Maria Carrillo really kind of showed in that first game that they're, you know, they're a ground and pound team and uh, yeah, I just I just think that that's gonna be, is is going to be a bad matchup for Venetia as far as you know. I'm, in, in in the past they've kind of relied more on their athleticism and, and speed and stuff on the outside. So, granted, you know, again they do you know they have had some 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 good defenses and, and some guys up front. But I think if again if if Carrillo you know if if that first game against Casa wasn't a fluke, I think that that this Korea team could be much improved this year. And I think you know I mean again, well this would be a good kind of. You know, I mean, back to back on Casa and Venetia is a great way to open the season and kind of see what you're made of. And um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, again, I think I think both both of us are high on Korea after last week, so I think that's why we're both going with him. Yeah, another another tough test, uh, another tough test for Windsor with Campolino coming to town. I mean, Windsor is at home, but Gus, we both uh, we both picked uh, Campolino for this one. Yeah, put this one up on your uh, bulletin boards for uh, for some motivation here, here Jaguars. Um, since, I know, since I know you guys read these things. <laughs> um, they do. They do. <laughs> so, uh, kind of same thing as the Venetian Korea one. I think this one could also be a bit of a pick 'em. Um, now, I, I am going. We are we are going with Campo. Um, Campo is the defending NCS Division Two champions. Um, they they beat Foothill last year in the playoffs, which was the team that uh, beat Rancho Catati. Now, again, different year, different teams. None of that stuff really matters a lot. But Campolino is a is a legit program. Um, they, they return, I believe their 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 top wide receiver. So that will be an amazing matchup with him and Windsor, uh, uh, you know, Windsor's Hayden Anderson, who is again, you know, one of the best sophomores in the Bay area out of DB and wide receiver. Um, yeah. And, and so far Campolino has opened up with a 28, 17 win, uh, over Moreau Catholic and they beat Aptos 30 to 22 last, last week. So, um, they're off to a good start. Uh, I think this will be. You know, Windsor being kind of battle tested after the Escalon game, I, I I think this will be close. I wouldn't be surprised if Windsor wins, but I also think that you know Campolino is a team with some continuity from last year and last year's team, and I believe that they're the favorite also as well to win the Diablo Foothill this year. So, um, yeah, I mean, again, Windsor use this as some motivation, but we're both going Campo this week. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, this is why we do these. I mean, if if this gives you motivation and, and it proves us proves us wrong, makes it makes us look like idiots, and then absolutely. But um, exactly. Next game on the slate, Eureka makes the long trip down to Ukiah. Um, we both have Ukiah in this one. I think Ukiah is going to bounce back. Obviously, they had had a tough two opening games, but I think they get their uh, first first dub on the board in this one. Yeah, Eureka always has has big guys um, up from Humboldt, but I think. Um, they, I mean, so they've only 
they beat Arcata 30 to zero last year. And Arcata is a kind of a, it seems like they're kind of a, a, a rebuilding team this year in division six, I think it's division six, division five, one of those two. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think, I think you you guys do to kind of break out here. They've had two tough games, as you said, you know, lost and lost to Northgate by a few touchdowns last week, but I think they, they do kind of break out and, uh, and win this one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think I learned my lesson on Healdsburg <laughs> two, two weeks, two weeks in. And obviously if, if Cloverdale has been uh, played, if Cloverdale keeps playing as, as well as they did in the, in the second half um, against Piner, then, then they should take this one. We both have Cloverdale. Yeah. Uh, Healdsburg, another tough loss last week. They lost 49 to zero at Novato. Um, don't quite know. Again, I'm a Healdsburg grad. So, and I, I love my Greyhounds, but I don't quite know where that program, what that program needs going forward, but it seems like they need they need something because, um, yeah, it's been a tough open opening to the season, no touchdowns and, um, yeah, two shutout losses and they're being out to out. They got they lost thirty seven to zero in the first one and then forty nine to zero in this one. So, um, again, Greyhounds, I'm sorry, but yeah, Cloverdale on this one. <laughs> don't say sorry, Gus. You're not sorry. I am sorry. I want. <laughs> no, I want you're to not. No, you're I want not. To you're not well. sorry. I want to see. <laughs> I do. You're the most unapologetic predictor I've ever seen in my life. Um, All right, game of the week here, Gus Petaluma and Annalee. Um, We both picked Annalee, uh, but we obviously we just talked about it. Um, It could, I mean, Petaluma could 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 come out and and take it, but Annalee might just be too much for them, especially if Henry Ellis is cut. Henry Ellis is uh, indeed out. Um, So both of us went Annalee there. Piner at San Rafael. um, we're not too sure. Again, we kind of touched on it. What happened with Piner last week? But San Rafael um, had a solid opening win against Santa Rosa, uh, which is in the NBL Oak. So uh, we both picked San Rafael. We probably don't think that Piner will do much better against San Rafael than Santa Rosa did. What do you say, Gus? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, honestly, I, th- I I think this one could also be an interesting game as well. Um, I think San Rafael is a bit is, is a program on a bit of an upswing as well, which you know again great great for those guys. I know that they have a new head coach and Casey Silly down there, who was the offensive coordinator at TAM. I want to say the year before, and they had a great offense over at TAM. So it seems like he has those guys, um, you know, primed and ready to go this year. And that's that's a program that's kind of been you know a bottom dweller in the MCAL, but uh, a couple decent wins to start the year. So I think that um, yeah, San Rafael I think is one of these teams to maybe, you know, for us, as, as far as smaller schools go or smaller programs, I guess it's um, yeah. I, I, I think that they're, yeah, I think that they're primed for a good game in this one too. So I don't, I don't quite know how they match up against Piner. Cause I know that Piner, again, they might've lost last week, but they had some, some good showings from, from some of the receivers. So I, uh, I don't quite know how that matchup fares for San Rafael, but um, I don't think it's going to matter a ton. I think San Rafael thinks this one. Yeah. Uh, St. Bernard's making the long trip down to Montgomery. Obviously, uh, St. Vincent beat Montgomery pretty handily in the first week of the season. St. This Bernard's. could be, or St. St. Bernard's, excuse me. Yeah. St. Vincent beat St. Bernard's, um, or, or first, first week of the season. Gus, this, uh, this is honestly quite a, uh, the kind of game that could prove, uh, that could make waves in our, at least our top five rankings. Um, but we both went Monty. Yeah, I think I think kind of I mean Monty is just like a bigger bigger school, bigger program. Um I think they're just also better this year, but I think this will be a really good kind of litmus test to see kind of where teams stack up as far as our rankings too. We have Monty again, Monty's fourth in our ranking, St. Vincent's five. St. Vincent's beat St. Bernard's 33 to 7 in that first week's game. Now St. St. Bernard's again was missing their 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 starting running back and a couple of guys in the line. I don't know if they're going to play for this game at Monty. Um but uh I think yeah, I mean, if St. Bernard's comes in and beats Montgomery, I think that would be kind of a kind of a shock, kind of a surprise. Um, again, they're a very they're they're slated to be a very very good team in Division Seven or in Division Five this year. Um, but again, I think what we've seen from Montgomery in the first two weeks, uh, where they've just put up, you know, I mean, again, their their defense was you know was awesome against you know Ukiah last week or two weeks ago, and then they just destroyed Bethel last week. So uh, I think this money team is legit. Uh, I think they're for real. I think this will be kind of a good a good test for them too, uh, in a St. Bernard's team that could go deep in the playoffs. Um, but I, you know, I mean, again, I, I, I think Montgomery, this is going to be one, one of the stronger years in recent memory. So yeah, Montgomery in this one. Yeah. And, uh, next game, next game on the slate, we kind of touched on this already, but Newman taking another, another tough trip this time to vintage. Um, obviously if Santino Acevedo isn't playing, um, this, that, that's it. That's a huge loss for Newman, obviously. 
uh, but we uh, both went uh, vintage regardless. Um, next one on the slate, Archie Williams at Santa Rosa. Archie Williams has are, are currently uh, have gone 500 through the first two weeks. Uh, pretty improved uh, team for the Peregrine Falcons. We are going with uh, Archie Williams, Gus. Uh, yeah, Archie, by all accounts and purposes, seems to be another one of these teams that is on the up and up in the MCAL. They have uh, a, a tall, really talented quarterback, um, a couple really dangerous guys on the outside. Um, and yeah, I mean, like we've kind of seen in the first couple of weeks with Santa Rosa, they have some good players, um, but they're just, you know, they're probably going to have a tough, a tough go of things this year. So I think Archie Williams is uh, is the pick. Yeah. Um, Real Trictati has kind of another tune up, if you will, welcome in Sacramento to town um, before they, they head out to, to Vanden um, next week. But we, I mean, after last week's performance with Cy and Liam doing their thing, I just don't see any way how Sacramento gets past Rancho Cotati. And I'm sure you feel the same way. Yep. No, I mean, Rancho is kind of the clear cut number one uh, in this area for sure. Um, I mean, I mean, honestly, if not in the entire North Bay, you know, I mean, throw, throw, I, Cal preps, you know, the online ranking uh, uh, kind of computer al- al- algorithm has has Rancho as the top team in the team in the North Bay, even over Marin Catholic and um, Vintage and teams like that. So, um, yeah, I think Rancho Patati is uber legit this year. I mean, you saw them in action last week. I mean, we- weapons galore. I think they're po- you know poised for a super deep run. Um, and yeah, Sacramento just isn't isn't the same kind of team. So, um, Rancho. Yep. All right. Headed to uh, Saturday um, or no, excuse me. One more game on Friday. Uh, Roseland University Prep at Upper Lake. We are pretty much on the same on the same page here regarding a lot of these games. But this is the game we're split on. I'm going to Roseland. I'm taking a risk. You know what? This is what we do. We take risks. Gus. I'm going to Roseland, but you're going Upper Lake. Well, in Upper Lake, Upper Lake is the uh, defending uh, champion in the NCL to eight man league. Um, I don't know how many guys have graduated, uh, but I think that that kind of um, that kind of talent, uh, I think you bring it over even from, uh, you know, I mean, especially from eight man, you know, you, you got to have some returners. I mean, there are no varsity, there are no JV programs as far as eight, like in, in eight man programs. Right. So they have a lot of returners. Rosen still kind of a new up, up, up and coming program. So, um, again, I, I think the Rosen story is awesome and we definitely have to write about them at some point this year as, of being this is like their fourth year of having a program. Um, but just all that being said, I think Upper Lake just has the advantage for all the reasons I just mentioned. So, all right. Well, I'm I'm taking Roseland in an upset, and if they if they do it, uh, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, headed to headed to Saturday here. Um, we got a, a decent decent matchup here. Casa Grande at Marine Catholic. It was a it was a pretty good game last year, um, but obviously Casa Casa played um, or Maria Pre, Maria Creo played Casa pretty close and I mean Marine Catholic is just always going to be Marine Catholic they're going to reload they're just always going to be at the top they're the defending state champions um so for that reasons we we took uh Marine Catholic yep I don't know if you can hear I'm like pulling up max trips as we're going so I'm gonna get an <laughs> awful autoplay ad so apologies to all the all the viewers at home for that um yeah, I think Marin Catholic again. They're uh, like you said, just kind of kind of a reload every year team. They're always really well coached, um, tons of depth everywhere. Um, again, I Casa is going to have a good season this year. I'm, you know, we we believe, but Marin Catholic again is just kind of that upper echelon of teams here in the North Bay. So I mean, again, if Casa goes in and and upsets them, I think we kind of have to put them in our in our top five next week. But um, going to be a tough challenge. So I think it's uh, I think it's Marin Catholic on this one. Yep. Yep. Uh, interesting game here, Gus. Uh, honestly, uh, Terra Linda versus um, Oops, Terra Linda versus um, versus. Uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm losing it. Um, T- Terra Linda versus Sonoma Valley, and Sonoma Valley is um, pretty uh, pretty interesting. Uh, pretty interesting team this year, isn't it, Gus? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, a lot of young players. Uh, guys like Trent Oman, um, Hudson G. Rita, guys who I've kind of written about before, but a lot of young pieces kind of everywhere, um, mostly juniors on their team, but a lot of them were sophomores last year uh, who played on varsity, so a lot of experience coming back. Uh, I mean, again, this is a team that is hungry, and they kind of feel like they have a little window here in these next couple of years to, to to kind of make a statement and and, and prove some things, because Sonoma Valley has not, has not been a great program over the last, I want to say, most of the last decade, so um Tara Linda too it seems like I mean they had a huge game last or huge game last week I think they destroyed Galileo something like 47 50 of zero or something like that so they can put up some points too so um 
I, I kind of think this one could go either way, but we're going to stick stick here in Sonoma and go with Sonoma Valley on this one. Yep, sounds like a plan. Um, Primetime Saturday game, it looks like uh, always always a great game. Um, two, two, two great games last year. St. Helena travels to um, St. Vincent, and first game was close last year, Gus. Second game, not so much, um, but we both have St. Vincent uh, this go-round. Yep, rematch of the NCS Division Seven title game from last year. Uh, yeah, I mean these these two were cut, these two teams were kind of on a collision course all last season uh, for that title game. Uh, yeah, the first first time around, you're right. You know the St. Vincent only won by one, and it was a really close game uh, at St. Helena. And then in the championship game, St. Vincent just kind of put put the pedal to the metal and just brought, you know just just kind of killed them. I think it was like a three four yeah. three touchdown game or something like that. Um, St. Vincent has so far shown, I mean, they haven't strict schedule might leave a little bit to be desired. I mean, St. Bernard's is a very good team, but again, like I mentioned again, missed a couple of guys, but um, you know, they, they, they killed Incline village 45 zero last week. Um, St. Helena so far has beat Justin Sienna, who I'm not quite sure what to make of them yet. Um, uh, I'm not sure either. They're, they're an interesting, interesting squad over there. Yeah. So I say, but, but again, I, I had kind of figured that St. St. Helena would take a step back just because they graduated so many guys from last year's team. I mean, they had nine all league guys graduate, including, you know, the league MVP and the defensive MVP of the entire league. So I would not have been a surprise if they got St. Helena won't be as good this year, but so far in, in their first two games, I mean, they, they killed winners last, last week. I think it was like 49 to 21 or something like that. Um, they've shown that they still got the dudes. So I, I think this will be another close game. I mean, kind of going into the season, I kind of or like before the season, you know, before we had played any games, I kind of thought St. Vincent would be a pretty heavy favorite. I still think they're a favorite. I don't think they're as heavy now, but I do think it'll be St. Vincent by maybe a couple, maybe a couple touchdowns. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see how it all shakes out. Uh, well, that rounds up our, our, our slate of uh, predictions here. Um, obviously some, some great games to be had um, uh, across the board. So it'll, be an interesting week three uh that'll do it i believe for our third episode of the pd preps podcast as always um you could follow all of our uh, pd preps co- coverage at pressdemocrat.com backslash sports backslash pd preps um you could also follow us on twitter uh, my username's at ko doherty 22 gus is at just gus pd um and keep in mind with these games and the we know it's hot. We know the heat waves going around, so we will keep you updated. It's supposed to cool down, I believe, uh, it's, for Friday, yeah. Saturday. But it's not going to be as hot going into this weekend, thankfully. But we're we're about to again. It's Tuesday here, and we're about to endure some hundred hundred plus weather here in you know Runner Park. Just like we, just like we did so. yesterday. I know. Um, yeah. Also, programming note too. I will not be around this weekend, so Keenan will be kind of filling in and. Uh, seeing what I had to do last year as the one as a one man show, so um, so cover so, he, so he'll be on game of the week duty, and then um, yeah, keep an eye out for some stuff from him, I guess too. Also, just throughout the you know week as far as preview coverage. Um, again, Petaluma Annalise our game of the week this week, and uh, yeah, again, this is um like you know, we've kind of said a couple times the last couple of days, but this slate of games this week is is kind of fantastic. So um, high school football season is kind of really really kicking it up into high gear at this point. So. Excited to see what kind of happens this week, and I'll be um I'll be watching you know remotely from uh from up in Portland where, where I'll be at a wedding. So, oh, that so means you won't be wedding. watching it. You, you won't be watching season. it all. And you it's won't wedding be season. It all. So, um, but yeah. Anyways, we appreciate we appreciate you um all for for w- watching slash listening. We uh we have gotten some great feedback on this um and we know you guys are reading. We know you guys are watching. So we appreciate your support. Um, and we will see you back next week for episode four.